Good morning from New York. Day. Kamala communicates using emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is linked to inner mind communication skills. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to be very thorough. Uh, I try to be very thorough. And uh, let me know how well I do. In the comments. Uh, if I do well, or if there are any improvements, uh, like putting someone else in front of this camera, which we are striving to do. <laughs> Our team just doesn't have a whole lot of time, and, and I'm one who does have the time, so uh, I'm up front. Anyway. The skills of inner mind communication are skills in role play, in self talk, and meditative awareness on feelings, using creative, objective, and compassionate uh, forms of empathy, and improving abilities like play, focus, and emotional expression, which are linked to self-awareness, self-control, and empathy, which are critical components of emotional intelligence. Okay, let's elaborate on the essence of inner mind communication and its relationship to emotional intelligence. Let's break down some key points. Then think of all the ways Kamala shows these abilities and has demonstrated these in her interactions with crowds and in her speeches. And remember, she has plans, not just concepts of plans. And I invite you to, to cite more examples of her skills in your comments on this video. Okay, let's look at the skills of inner mind communication, role play and self talk. These involve engaging in internal dialogues where you can adopt different perspectives and analyze situations from various angles. Um, this helps in self reflection, problem solving, and, and decision making. Uh, meditative awareness. Uh, this focuses on cultivating mindfulness and being present with your thoughts and emotions. It enables you to uh, observe your inner world without judgment, leading to, well, greater self-understanding and emotional regulation. Um, creative, objective, and compassionate empathy. This involves the ability to understand and share the feelings of others while maintaining objectivity. And uh, it fosters empathy and helps in building strong relationships. Um, this, there, these three forms of empathy um, are basically um, not just, they're not just communications between ourselves and others in real life. They, they can be communications uh, within ourselves, within our own imaginations, in our own daylight dream, uh, which we can uh, role play out loud. And that's, that's, that's what we do. Um, yeah, that's what we do. This is what, what this channel uh, uh, promotes is uh, a way of uh, doing this um, and it's it's based on earlier abilities that we had before we even had language which uh, uh, inner mind communication is is all about therefore play focus and emotional expression these skills are fundamental 
to emotional intelligence. Playfulness enhances creativity and adaptability. Focus improves attention and concentration, and emotional expression allows for healthy communications, uh, the communication of feelings. Um, this, this in our practice, um, is, is done um, without the use of language to um, separate it from the, the, the role play functions uh, where we do use language. And um, that, that part is what I call the infant mind. And that's um, a place where we don't have a, a self-concept we're ego transcendent. And this is uh, linked to emotional intelligence. Self-awareness. These are the three things, uh, the basic things, elements of emotional intelligence. Self-awareness, self-control, and empathy. Self-awareness is the understanding of your emotions, strengths, weaknesses, and motivations, um, your own. Um, Self-control is uh, the ability to manage your emotions and impulses effectively, meaning if everything in the world isn't just triggering you and making you go off out, out of your mind uh, the way uh, Trump did in his debate with uh, Kamala. Uh, you, you lost it, <laughs> you completely lost it, which is not a good sign. Empathy, the, this is the capacity to understand and share the feelings of others. And you got to understand that when you're doing, uh, being empathetic, you're being empathetic with not the real person, but how you imagine that person to be. Um, what you... Um, what you're picking up from that person and how you, uh, the perspective you take on what you're receiving uh, from that person, if it's in real life. And, and in your own imagination, um, it's you know, entirely just how you imagine that person to be. Uh, but it's still, it's still a good exercise. Um, the idea that we would totally share the feelings of others is, is uh, erroneous, but the face, our faces communicate. Um, and that's a, a basic kind of a survival thing that, that that developed in uh, the human ape species. Ask Sapolsky, he's the one that says we're all apes. Just ask him, Dr. Sapolsky. I think he's right. But, <laughs> and we demonstrate it constantly. <laughs> yeah. And, Good ways and bad ways. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah. So, always be flexible in how you're imagining things and, uh, you know, take, take your imagination with a grain of salt. But uh, you can practice these skills using your imagination and and they're valuable skills, and uh, they do lead toward a greater awareness of yourself. But uh, I take a little issue with self-awareness because you're not the same person all the time. You're not the person you were yesterday. You're not the person you were a second ago. Um, but there are some things that 
are traits that that seem to be stable. Um, but you can be born again. Ask any mistake. You can change. Um, you can go back and uh, ex experience your life and all kinds of perspectives and actually become a different person, a better person. So I don't like the idea of self-awareness in the, if you're going to think this is where I'm stuck. This is this is what I have to be. No, you don't. Be flexible. Your real self, I would say the most stable, you know, the less changing uh, self is your brain. Um, and uh, it's changing. It's learning all the time. So you're learning all the time. Um, anyway, I, I think that I've made a good point here that these skills are important. And we know that uh, Kamala Harris uh, has these skills. And her compassion in a speech with uh, with a young lady um, recently who had some troubles in her uh, compassion for Trump that she showed in the debate there. Um, she's a wonderful person. She just is. And uh, nobody's perfect. I'm not saying that she's perfect. But uh, you've got a choice. You can choose Trump, who has seemingly none of these skills, and decide to give him power when he's uh, obviously going to abuse it. As more or less said, you know, he wants to be a dictator. And uh, his own generals have said he's a fascist. You know, unbelievable. Well, you just can consider, you know, his uh, degra degrading our our troops on the, the guys who died on, on D uh, at D Day on D Day, yeah, fighting uh, a terrible threat to democracy and uh, the better angels of humanity. Just. How could you do that? How could you fix your face to say something like that? But he did. He called them suckers and losers. This is a, at least it was a four or five star general. It was, I think, a four star general who says he said that. I, I don't know if very many four star generals are in the habit of lying about things. Why would they? Not lying. Others report the same. They're lining up to speak out about it. His own staff are coming around going, no, don't vote for him. And some really, really great Republicans um, are saying, don't vote for him. <laughs> So what does it take, people? What 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 does Kamala need to do to get your vote? Walk on water? You know, it's just it's just insane. What they ask of her is just ridiculous, you know. You know, she's got to, you know, you know, be perfect in every way. But uh 
all Donald Trump has to do is weave, make no sense, be unable to put a sentence together, and and decide, oh, I've had enough with questions, aren't you? Let's just dance and sit and sing and all this. Oh, my God. Are you going to put somebody like that into the White House? And he tried to take over the government. You know, he sat back on his laurels. Uh, he has no laurels to sit on. <clears throat> anyway, he, he sat and didn't do anything with a crowd trying to uh, chanting you know, hang his former vice president. Really? He could have put an end to all that mess, and he decided not to. You know, he's, 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 I've got to say, I'm sad for America that he's, he's risen to head one of our main or, or one of our main political parties our main two yeah, seemingly two that uh have a chance and, and somebody like him is leading the republican party the party that was the party of lincoln who freed the slaves It uh, was all about freedom, but uh, Trump wants to take away the, the woman's freedom to decide what to do with her own body. Really? You know, that should be decided between a mother and the, and the doctor. I mean, you know, the, otherwise you end up in situations where the lady could die or never be able to conceive again or, you know, come on. You want the government there? I mean, for a party that talked about small government, isn't this a little odd that it, you know, it's, it's small until it wants to enrich the wealthy. That's how it is today. Once it wants, it's enriching the wealthy, then the government has great powers. The power to tax unfairly. Yeah, that's... Yeah, and... Uh, hmm. and well, you said that's increasing the power of government, not the... Uh, well, yeah, it's getting government in your life more and not less. Uh, but is it increasing the size of the government? Mm. Well, Trump wants to get rid of the government, so the whole Constitution. <laughs> right? Just him and his followers. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that what you want? Unbelievable. Anyway, no, oh, tired of talking about Trump. Let's have a little joy. Let's let's think about it, uh, how great it's going to be if we get uh, Kamala Harris elected president. Let's think on that today. And uh, I hope that this day and in every day, you find a way to make it just a little more of a day of love. <laughs> Oh, he poisons the language, calling an insurrection a day of love. You know, people.
talk about hanging his vice president a day of love. Oh my God. That, that phrase is now tarnished. Anyway, let's not let it be tarnished. Make a real day of love. Yeah, for yourself and others. Be thankful and be kind. And uh, let's find common ground and uh, mutual benefit for everyone, considering everyone, uh, including workers who are involved in trade, as trading partners, not uh, something like an extra office machine. I've got to make this point. Sorry, I just got to make this point. Workers are trading partners. They're not just a cost business, they can be. The businesses are a cost to workers, or can be. Or they can each benefit each other, which is the best way. Trading partners. Nobody a slave. Everybody free to organize, okay? Free. Keep thinking on, keep thinking on that. Leave your comments, share, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, let's increase the love flow in this world before we end up destroying it. With all the uh, love that is possible today. I wish that your destiny will be one of compassion, creativity, and objectivity. So that the virtues of truth and goodness and artfulness can lift up your day, all your days, and the world we all live in.